Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today, yet again, because we're putting quite a few videos up today, we're taking a look at the Gigabyte Z87 G1 Sniper 5. Uh, because uh, there have been quite a few now. They've been releasing the uh, Snipers now, or the G1 range, or whatever you want to call it, uh, since the 1366 socket. In fact, I have one of the original... Um, G1 Sniper Assassins, or was it the G1 Assassin that I had? Anyway, it was black and green, it was Assassin, it was huge! Because it was um, XLATX board. Now, but we are here to talk about this. Now I know there are a lot of people that are already chit-chatting about this board because it is going to be their high-end, gaming-focused motherboard. And there is a hell of a lot for us to talk about. There's a lot going on with this board. So, where shall we start? Now I know a lot of you are already talking about the um, the audio on these boards, so we will start in this corner and we will talk about audio. So I'm going to pick it up. Now I am hugging my tripod, so please do bear with me. You can see that we've got this kind of gold topped and it says Soundcore 3D chip here. Uh, now the easiest way for me to show you the light trails around the board, if we turn it around this way, can see through the board there and you can see those light trails it's very similar to the um, Maximus design from the 5 series of the Asus boards but you can see that now these are going to light up like a yellowy gold color and this is meant to be kind of like protection for these audio caps and stuff uh, and the kind of gold does follow on through with through to the back because there are gold connectors on the audio but I don't want to talk about the rest yet but that will all light up now the big focus with these is the O amps here for the headphone amps and you can uh, upgrade them. Now it does come with one in the box and a tool to be able to remove it and everything but there are going to be uh, a additional ones yet. Now we've not been additional ones that you can buy afterwards. We've not been given all the details for it but I'm assuming that some of them will be you know uh, music clarity, some are going to be you know gaming this and some of them are going to be you know extra bass. We don't know yet. Um, but they, it does come with an extra one in it. Until we actually get there to review them and play around with the audio, we're not going to know what the difference is between them are. But it's a pretty good feature that you do get an extra one with it, but you will be able to buy more to tune to your own specific needs. Now, as we did mention around the back, we'll do this bit first. So, back end layout, or IO layout, however you want to kind of uh, word it got a PS2 up here so if you have got a PS2 keyboard or mouse do like to use them many people still do you've got a connector you've got two um, uh, USB 2's digital coax or coax out however you want to put it um, for audio then we've got this is gold plated by the way then we've got a gold plated HDMI connector there there's another gold plated HDMI connector there and then there's also a gold plated uh, full size display port connector on that one. Two USB 3s there. There's four more USB 3s here, so six USB 3s in total. And then two gigabit Ethernets. Down to the digital, um, sorry, down to the HD audio that we spoke about before with gold plated connectors. And then we've also got a digital audio, sort of optical audio out there. Now, what we will do is we'll talk about kind of round the top section. You can see that we've got some massive heat sinks here. Um, there's a lot of cooling around this kind of MOSFET power delivery area. Now, quite surprisingly for Gigabyte, there's been a lot of speculation about this. I'm trying to get the, I'm having trouble working out what's the best way for me to show you. But we do have a barb there and a barb there. So there are water cooling barbs there if you did have water cooling. Now, looking at them, they do look like half inch bulbs. They are half inch bulb, which is kind of a normal um, water cooling size hose. I would say though, half inch, I would be using um, seven 16 inch hose on these. Yeah, they're definitely half inch, I'm just making sure. Now, quite surprisingly, we can see that there is a fan as well. Now, that fan, uh, I was very worried about it. It does look like someone in China got bored and decided that they needed to fill up a bit of that area. So they've put a fan on it. Now, I've not heard it running myself, but I've been assured it is very quiet stroke. You can't hear it at all. But 
as I do with my Rampage, you can always disable it. And if you really want to, I've been looking for the uh, wire to just pull it out of the board. I have to admit, it's underneath the uh, here, but you can get your fingers round to it, as I'm just showing you. Oh, come on, Tom. There we go. You can get your fingers round there, so you would be able to just remove it if you wanted. When I test it properly, I will tell you whether you can disable it in the BIOS or not. I'm hoping so. Uh, when I first reviewed the Rampage, I requested that, and uh, a lot of other people said that they didn't like it as well, and they did, with a BIOS revision, it did get rolled out. I'm hoping this is already in there, though. Um, but anyway, if I put the board down, you can see that the heat sinks go right the way around the board, and they're all heat piped up as well. We don't know what uh, is nestling underneath that heat sink there, but by looking at it, it does look round the back here like there is an extra chip there by that little cluster of solder pins, which is right underneath this. Um, so considering that this has got four full length PCI Express slots, now I'm not allowed to talk about what's on the chip set, as in the way the PCI lanes are arranged on the chip set, but this is wired as a 16 times lane. That's an 8, that's a 16, and that's another 8. So that's four slots there, two 16s, two 8s, and then you've got three PCI Express 1s. Um, a, a wise man would be kind of guessing that there may be a PLX chip underneath that, but you know, until we can do the uh, full review and rip heat sinks off and stuff like that, I'm not allowed to, uh, well, I can't talk about it. I did want to take the heatsink off of this and show you what's underneath this, uh, but I've been explicitly told I'm not allowed to show you the chipset yet. So you'll have to uh, kind of bear with me. Talking about uh, what's underneath the chipset though, you can see that we've got a little power connector here and a wire that disappears into the heatsink. And that's because the uh, sniper logo here, or the G1 logo, whatever you want to call it, where the head with the knife and the beret and everything is, that you can see that there is clear plastic underneath, so that's gonna light up. Uh, I would have thought with the color of the board and the way that all the other boards that have lit up from these in the past, that's gonna light up green. But again, I'm not allowed to show you the board powered on at all or anything yet, uh, just to try and keep within NDAs. Uh, I know this is gonna be frustrating for a lot of you, but to be fair, peeps, um, I'm, I'm skating so close to the wind already. I'm lit this is just a, a very early preview. Uh, you will get the full reviews when uh, the NDA gets lifted. Um, but it's just, we're trying to keep uh, Intel happy, but also trying to give you guys a good look at the boards and uh, you know give you guys as much information as I can do without getting my uh, testicles wrapped, taken off uh, by Intel. Um, now, we do have six black SATA connectors here. These four grey ones are gigabyte SATA threes. Um, so if I say that, just trying to say that that says SATA three, you can see that there's a little thing there, but I'm obviously not allowed to tell you the way, you know, what connections we've got on the chipset or anything, but yeah, like I said, that says G SATA free. You can read plenty of other stuff. Now that you can see this SATA power connector here, this SATA power is to um, add extra power on for the uh, uh, PCI Express should you be running really more than two cards. Um, but to be fair, unless you're doing massive overclocks or you have got four cards in because you're a mentalist, uh, you're really not gonna need it too much. Now, up to the business end of the board, uh, we've got an onboard power there, reset switch and a BIOS switch. There are switches over here to be able to switch between the, uh, the onboard BIOSes as well. LCD poster readout, that's lovely, especially when you're overclocking, that's great. And also, not necessarily just overclocking, but uh, when you're um, fault finding if something goes wrong. We've also got a USB 3 up here, which is uh, you know going to be uh, of great help. Um, there is a second pier. USB 3 down here, should you want it. It's got a little cover on it, which is also quite nice. Talking about USBs and down the bottom of the board, we've got two onboard USBs there, USB 2s, and the front panel audio connector is there. Now, I'm just, uh, right, I'm just gonna have a quick look. So we've got two there, what one is that? 
Uh, right, so, fan connections. CPU fan connection up there. We've got a four pin fan connection nestled in there at the end of the heat sink. We've got fan connection there, there, and there. So we've got one, two, three, four along the bottom. And I'm sure I spotted some up here as well. There's two more up the top of the board as well. They're three pins. So there's absolutely bloody loads of uh, fan connections scattered around the board. Just to point them all out again, there's two at the top. They're both four pins. We've got one down at the bottom of the uh, heat sink there. There's one here, one here, one here, one here. They're all four pins. And then we've got two lone three pins up there just above the LCD uh, poster readout there. So there's a lot of uh, fan connections there. Obviously, you know, when it comes to gaming and stuff, people do seem to get a bit fan friendly. Um, for those of you that don't really like quiet, that is. Something I will talk about, although I don't want to go into all of the features and stuff that come with the box, it does come with a wireless card that you can plug into one of these PCI Express ones and a uh, wireless stand as well. Now, uh, it is and quite a good thing as well, so it is dual um, antenna. There's two pickups there and two pickups on the card as well. Now, uh, th this is obviously great if you have got wireless, but to be fair, peeps, I'm not really a fan of wireless, especially when it comes to gaming and stuff. You'd be better off getting some home plugs and running the uh, Ethernet. Home plugs, essentially, you put one of the home plugs near your router or your modem, plug an Ethernet directly into it, have the other home plug where your PC's plugged in, Ethernet out of that and into your rig, and it's as good as, or well, not perfect, but pretty damn close to being as close as you're going to get to having a cable without running a massive cable. I even used them at TTL Towers to run uh, um, Ethernet from the main part of the office into my front room where my TV and the Nurberg rig pick up the internet that way. I don't use wireless. Uh, the only wireless I've got is for my laptop and my phone, which obviously they don't really need awesome connections or anything. But anyway, uh, so there we have it, guys. This is the Big Daddy uh, Sniper. Uh, we would have thought, especially with all these features, the extras that you got with it, you know what I mean, the, the cooling options, the, the fact that we can see that it's pretty much laid out there for four graphics cards should you want to use them, the extra audio bits all down here, the OAMP stuff. It's not going to be a cheap board. It's not going to be the budget end. This is going to be their extreme end of the gaming board spectrum. So I would have thought that it will fall in with the sort of prices that we were used to having the high-end sniper stuff coming out at before. Um, what do you think? I actually really like the uh, the black and green. It's not a, a new design for them, but the kind of the way that they're kind of displaying the green on the heat sinks is a, a new angle for Gigabyte, and I like that subtlety. I think this full up with uh, say for example, say like black RAM. Uh, maybe NVIDIA graphics cards because of that green flash on the NVIDIA graphics cards is my kind of thinking. If you run a H100i as well, we could obviously have that the light in the middle of the H100i because it does light, light up in the middle. You can have that lit up green. There, there are loads of options that you could customise this and really make that black and green combo work well in your rig. I've, done, I've personally done black and green rigs in the past. I did one and a half once to show the original... Um, uh, I, I had the G1, uh, G1 Assassin, which was an XL, uh, XL ATX rig. Sorry, it's getting late here. I'm forgetting my words. And I did a black and green build just to show you how you could make it all, you know, link in and work well. And if you go to my Tiny Tom Logan Facebook page, you'll be able to find the photos. You really can make an epic black and green rig. Uh, but anyway, I've done uh, enough for you now. Uh, I'm starting to not slur my words but forget what I'm trying to say and getting stuff mixed up. So what I am going to do is love you and leave you. So this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out.